So today you're gonna to learn how to create this speaker in Blender 3D. So I took some reference photos, uh, you can see here. So just some random photos of my speaker on my desk. You can use a phone, you can really use anything to take these photos. The quality doesn't matter. You just have to be able to see what the speaker looked like. And also don't forget to um, measure the height of whatever you're gonna remodel, because that's gonna be important later on. Then we're just gonna hop right into Blender. The first thing we're gonna do is just gonna open up our reference. I just uh, tend to open it on the left side of Blender, so I just have it in view and can always look at it at any time. Then we're gonna add a reference object f with our reference image. I'm gonna take the one with the measurement on it so we can match it up in Blender. So first I'm gonna add the cube, and now I'm just gonna scale it down to one centimeter and match the image to my cube. So we're modeling in the right scale. So once it's done, just um, move the image so it's centered. So the image is gonna represent your speaker basically. So this is where you're gonna model the speaker. So I'm just gonna center it out, put it on the floor. You don't need the cube anymore. This was just for reference. So now we're gonna create a, another cube. We could have used the cube we just had, but I'm just gonna make another one. So I'm just gonna center it real quick by changing the origin to the center of the cube and pressing Alt-G. So now it's centered. Now we're just gonna roughly block out the speaker once blocked out, we're gonna add bevels around the edges to get the roundness of the speaker. Just like this. Once it looks good, you can basically delete everything except the outline. So I'm just gonna delete the inner faces, the outer face, and now I'm just gonna center back the main face. So all we need is this outline of the speaker. So just put it on zero. Once it's on zero, I'm just gonna see what parts does this speaker have. So it has the round speaker part and it has this air vent on the bottom. So that's how we're gonna separate the speaker. But first we're just gonna mirror it real quick so we don't have to work twice. So now I'm just gonna cut it with K for the air hole on the bottom and then also cut it around the speaker with K and I make them straight using SZ0. Now I'm just gonna intrude the face so we can work with a clean mesh later on. It's a bit hard to understand at the moment, but this is a very relevant step to have a clean mesh. You can uh, keep some air, it doesn't have to be perfectly around the spot that we're trying to cut out, just roughly around it so we can work inside that face so we don't mess up the rest of the mesh. So that's gonna be our working space, basically. So first we're gonna model in the round speaker. So I'm just gonna create a circle object. Just scale it down and fit it around the speaker. Then I realized there's some more around the speaker, so the plastic is kind of indented around the speaker. It's a little bit hard to see. You can see a little bit better here on this image. So that's why I'm making a bigger circle than the speaker actually is. So once it's done, I'm gonna delete the face from our cube, basically, and now uh, center the circle. So it's also zero, zero, zero on Y, or not zero, 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 only zero on Y. And now we're just gonna bridge edge loops. And if this happens, you don't have enough cuts on the other side. So we're just gonna add some cuts and vertices and bridge edge loop again. And now you see you've got a perfect circle. Kind of like Boolean, but way more controlled. So now I'm just gonna extrude it real quick so we have the clean shape to work with again. I'm gonna scale it down to the speaker, get some air here. So now Boolean, uh, extrude in the speaker. So the speaker itself will be a separate object. So I'm getting this other reference image I already showed you. So here you can see it's kind of indented. So we're just gonna like move it in a little bit. So next, I'm just gonna cop, ah, first we're just gonna do a cut on the outside so we can do a nice bevel. So move it back in. Do a nice bevel here with control B. Subdivide it down with control one, two, three, four. Now we're also gonna bevel this edge, just like on the reference image, so we got a clean shape here. So now I'm gonna take one edge, copy and paste it, to model the inside speaker. So I'm also just gonna extrude it, scale it down. I'm 
So just match the shape first. Then make a straight cut so we can get this round donut shape. Now you see we've got a little issues here. This is when the normals are not correct. So just flip them or recalculate them with Alt N. So I'm just gonna tweak around the speaker, extrude a little bit so we got even more of a donut shape here. So now we're gonna do the same again. We're gonna copy and paste one of the inner edges and now we're gonna create the inside part of the speaker. So just like scale it down. So we have like a circle, chop it up. Now we're gonna turn on proportional editing. Here it's important to use spherical proportional editing. Then we're just gonna push it in a little bit. With the scroll wheel, we can change the size of the proportional editing. Now we're just gonna move it so it looks good. Now I'm also gonna take the outer edge to scale it up a tiny bit so it's inside the donut, so there's no light hole later on. Now I'm just gonna close up the back so there's also no space for light to shoot through, so it's just dark in there. So now, we're just gonna go to the bottom and basically do the same. So first we're just gonna turn off subdivision real quick. So just make another cube, scale it down. We're just gonna remodel this air vent real quick the same way we modeled the whole speaker. So just block it out, block out the size, take the edges. We just need to take the right edges since we're gonna mirror it. Bevel it down with control B once again. Once it looks good, just delete the other half after doing some cuts for our mirror. So just delete the rest, we just need the outline. Just gonna move it to Y0 once again. Now I notice that the, uh, also, yeah, now I notice that the verts aren't aligned, so make them zero as well on X. Now we're just gonna delete the face of our main speaker, both sides. So I'm gonna mirror this without a mirror modifier real quick, so just S, X, minus one. Once that's done, merge the vertices with Alt M just in center. So now we're just gonna bridge the edge loops just like on the top. So right click, bridge edge loops. It's important to be on edge mode for this. So now we're just gonna extrude. So we've got a clean mesh once again, just like on the top. So then just extrude it in just by eye. Doesn't have to be perfect here. No one will really notice the difference. It's just, just a tutorial here. We don't have to do it super perfect. Also, one thing to note, a speaker like this wouldn't be modeled in a software like Blender. These kind of things are always modeled in CAD. So in a product designer's program with curves instead of polygons, just a thing to note down on the side. This is untypical for being modeled in a software like Blender. So just get the other reference image real quick. So we got a nice side view. So I'm just gonna extrude the edge real quick so we got a better look onto the mesh from the side so we can match up our reference image. So just scale up the image. We won't scale any meshes since the mesh is matched with our one centimeter cube. So we're always only gonna scale the reference images. Don't scale the mesh. So I'm just gonna extrude it in so it looks nice. Move the reference image back. Now we're gonna add a nice bevel edge once again with Control B, just so it looks good. Now we're gonna take the inner edge, do the same, but first extrude it in with E, scale it in. Then we're gonna bevel the edge once again. So now it looks like a nice plastic part. Now we're gonna copy and paste this edge, move it along Y a little bit, extrude in the shape, so the black plastic. Also gonna extrude it inwards, do a nice bevel here. So it looks good to me. Now we're gonna take the back edge and try to match the black plastic even more. So just move it down, don't extrude. Just until it looks nice, just tweak it around. Have to scale it down since I noticed that there's a, the back part is slightly smaller than the front part. I'm just gonna extrude this once again, scale it in. So you see what the workflow is here, kind of. Here you don't need a bevel since this part is very round, so I'm just gonna do another cut here. So it looks pretty good. 
The inside, we're also going to extrude one so we can have a clean mesh and then just hit F to fill up the hole. So now the only thing I'm noticing is that the whole speaker is tilted. So I'm going to parent everything real quick to the black body, the black plastic, so we can rotate it down. So it sits on the floor. Now I notice that the back part is tilted. So I'm just going to straighten it out real quick with SY0. So looks pretty good. So last thing pretty much is just this air vent. I'm just going to make it look nice. Just chop it down, extrude it inwards once again, fill it with F. Set another cut so we've got a good tight bevel edge. So it looks pretty clean. So that's pretty much it. Now I'm just going to build a quick type of photo studio. So like a photo paper wall. So just bevel a plane's edge real quick. Um, I'm going to add an area light. We're just going to light this with some area lights. I'm not going to make a huge deal out of lighting here. So just a quick solid light setup. So just mirror over the light source. A little hint, if you Alt D instead of just copy pasting or Shift D on the light source, it's going to be an instant. So if you change the brightness on one, it's going to change it on both. So that's what I did here. So now I added a camera. I'm just going to make it square. Like this is just personal preference. It doesn't really matter. Just gonna make it look good. I'm gonna tilt this. This is called a three quarter angle. So this is a typical product visualization angle, but this is also all just by eye. Basically, I'm just trying to show you how I would do this and how my workflow is. Of course, if I would have a real job, I would do this in a way higher detail. So the model would be more detailed, the light setup would be more detailed, but the whole thing would take way longer. So the idea of this tutorial is just to show you how the basic steps are. So you can just kind of understand how you would do this on your own in the future. So now I'm just going to add the material real quick. First, the black plastic, play around with the roughness. We definitely need a noise map in the normal input of the principal shader. Don't forget the normal map node, hook it up to height. So now I'm just going to play around with the noise texture until it looks like plastic. You could also use a real plastic texture from textures.com. So either way works, but often if you've got plastic like this and it's basically just noise, you can probably just use a noise texture as I'm doing here. So it doesn't really matter at the end. But with a noise texture, you've got a lot of control, which is also very nice. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to copy and paste the shader to the white plastic, change the color since it's pretty much the same material. Also do the same on this rubbery part of the uh, speaker. But here I'm going to change the roughness a little bit, as well as the normal map strength and the normal map scale. So I'm just tweaking around so it looks good to me. So then the last part is the inside of the speaker. I'm also going to copy and paste the shader over. Just change the roughness. And then it looks pretty good. Play around with the normal a little bit. Change the roughness. So there's a lot of tweaking, as you can see. So until it looks good. By the way, I'm using Eevee here because of the screen capture. I couldn't do renderings for some reason. I don't know why. So the light setup is harder to make. And also the material setup is a bit harder to make here. But just so you know, I'm not using cycles. You should be using cycles. So now I'm just going to unwrap this real quick for our Logitech logo. So basically, you can just unwrap the strip for the Logitech and the rest you can just unwrap and make very small. So I'm just using a mix shader here real quick, mixing um, both materials with our Logitech image, which is black and white, as you can see. So now you see my UVs. So just scale down the rest in some little corner. And the important part we're going to have on the Logitech. So now I'm realizing both shaders are white, so definitely make one of them gray, so we can actually see our um, texture. So just scale it so it looks good. If you want to do it perfectly correct, you should have the reference image behind this, but I'm just doing this by eye real quick. So I'm just changing the look, changing the roughness, because the print part on plastic is usually a bit rougher than the plastic below, or less rougher depends. So I'm just making it a little bit more rough here, so it looks a bit more realistic. 
I'm also just on the bottom polygon of our photo studio. I'm gonna add a little metallic. This is super unrealistic, but it adds a little bit of reflection to the floor, which is very popular on like Amazon images and stuff like that. So this is theoretically kind of unrealistic, but looks good. So this is a stylizing choice I took here. So now I did a quick render, as you can see. I'm also not just gonna use this one render, I'm also gonna render the outline real quick. So I deleted or hid the backdrop, so our photo studio, do another viewport render real quick. So I got a mask, so since we just need this one mask, I just did it this way. So add it to Photoshop, control select it, so we got a mask, now add the mask to our render, copy and paste the render, invert one mask, so now the speaker separated from the background. Now I'm just going to add a, a curve modifier real quick. So just whiten it up a little bit. So you got a nice white image and mainly only the reflection. Now I'm just going to clean up the mask since it's not perfectly white yet. So I'm just doing this by hand real quick. So once done, I'm going to color grade the main speaker with the camera raw filter in Photoshop. So usually, usually I just do automatic and add some clarity, add some texture. So just like basic color grading. Sometimes I play around with the shadows. So nothing too fancy here. Contrast. So just a quick color grade. So now it already looks much better. And that's pretty much it. I'm just noticing there's a lot of noise inside the speaker. One thing to note when I rendered, I didn't use the denoiser because it tends to denoise the plastic bump. So uh, I rather denoise the parts manually after with the camera raw filter as seen here. So I just denoised the whole copy and pasted image. Now I'm just gonna mask in. So click the mask with alt. So it's an inverted mask and now just paint it in. It's pretty easy since the brush is round. So we can just paint this in by hand. If you've got uh, special parts that you can't just paint in by ha hand, you should definitely render out a mask for this. But in this case, I thought I can just paint it in real quick because it was a very simple shape. So now I just denoised only that part. So the rest still has a nice plastic bump. And then you just save the image. And now you can also see a big benefit of rendering something like this is it's perfectly transparent. So you can just push stuff behind the speakers in Photoshop. You've just got a lot of control on what you could do with this image. Um, you could place it into stock footage. You could do all kinds of stuff. So and that's pretty much it. So you see, this is a very nice rendering. Actually was pretty quick. So it probably took me like 20 minutes um, to make this like from zero, like from scratch, from my scratched images to a final render. So it maybe goes faster than you might think, maybe slower than you might think. But either way, uh, you probably learned how it's done and how I would do it. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show. So I hope you have fun uh, creating things from your apartment, maybe. Maybe not just the speaker, maybe anything in your apartment. So just keep practicing. Um, and then you'll get better. And that's pretty much it for today. Goodbye.